The universe of My Little Pony is spectacular, full of magic and fun characters. Spike has a crush on Mary! As well as powerful ones. <laughs> but do you really know all the secrets that the show doesn't want you to uncover? In the very first episode of the series, the sharpest eyes can spot one of these secrets by paying attention to the hourglass that appears in some scenes, where we can see the reflection of Nightmare Moon, one of the great villains of the show. This was a clue for us viewers that Nightmare Moon would soon appear to cause chaos in the enchanted world of Equestria. I think this already convinces you that this show has some pretty dark secrets, right? But know that this is just the first of the eight secrets My Little Pony doesn't want you to know. So hop on, because another Sinnoh wave is starting. Cutie marks are an essential part of the My Little Pony universe and one of the most mysterious features of the characters in the series, being special symbols that represent the characteristics and powers of the ponies. The origin of cutie marks is a real enigma, but it's certain that these symbols have a connection with magic in ancient times. There's a theory that the first ones were created by a spell cast by Star Swirl to help ponies find their purpose. No wonder a pony feels lost and melancholic when they lose their cutie mark, as we see in some episodes of the show. But here comes a real question. Do cutie marks really help ponies find their purpose, or are they a way to bind each pony to a predetermined determined destiny they can't escape. Just imagine, what if these symbols actually influence their owners' minds to make each pony act a certain way? Of course, I'd rather believe the theory that every cutie mark is a representation of its owner's soul essence. That's a good reason why they're linked to their user's personality, and unlike the other theory, thinking about it doesn't give me existential crises all night long. If that were the case, the discouragement characters feel when they lose their marks would be the same as someone being deprived of their source of happiness. Like how you'd feel if this channel stopped posting videos. <laughs> Now, something really unexpected is to learn that My Little Pony has a Bible. That's right, folks, a Bible. But hold on, it's not a religious Bible about a humble pony turning water into wine. In this context, a Bible is a book that contains tons of information about an animated series, talking about the world where the story takes place, recurring characters, and many other details. This kind of book is usually made even before the show is released, with the goal of presenting the program's ideas so that the series can be approved or adjusted before production begins. Many cartoons have Bibles, like Batman, the animated series, and Adventure Time. Of course, My Little Pony wouldn't be left out, as the series has a vast world and many characters. The My Little Pony Bible contains plenty of information about the G4 characters and even shows the creative process behind the ponies, including alternative designs that shows artists had before deciding on the final looks of the characters. By the way, how about I talk a little bit more about these designs? But before that, if you've always wanted to wander around the magical world of Equestria just like I have, comment below hashtag magic. Pinkie Pie is definitely iconic. Even people who've never watched the show might recognize her because of her popularity. But her now famous look wasn't always this way, as she had other designs that were scrapped during the show's development. Pinkie Pie was originally supposed to be a Pegasus pony, likely to resemble Surprise, a pony from the first generation of MLP. Meanwhile, Fluttershy was initially designed to be an Earth pony. After all, the idea was for her to be a new version of Posey, who was also from G1. In the end, she became a reimagined version of G3's Fluttershy. As for Rarity, she was simultaneously inspired by two G1 ponies and one G3 pony, inheriting different features from all three. Glory's color scheme, Sparkler's cutie mark and appearance, and certain personality traits from G3's Rainbow Dash. Her name, however, came from a fourth pony, also from G3. Speaking of Rarity, her cutie mark's original element was inspiration instead of generosity, but this was changed because it was easier for children to understand what it means to be generous. Twilight Sparkle, our protagonist, also went through major changes before becoming the pony we all know. Her original version shared the same pinkish color scheme as a G1 character, also called Twilight, but it was later changed to resemble G3's Twilight Twinkle. In fact, she was even referred to as Twilight Twinkle in the early drafts of the show. Like Rarity, Twilight Sparkle eventually inherited characteristics from all of her inspirations, the ability to teleport from her G1 version, and G3's hobby of watching fireflies, which was adapted into stargazing. It was only during the character creation process that the show's creators decided on her personality and role in the story, as she originally had a much more reserved personality and wasn't even meant to be the protagonist. Wow. Pinkie Sense seems to be some kind of superpower that causes Pinkie Pie's body to shake in weird ways when something bad is about to happen, serving as a kind of future prediction. The origin of this ability was never really explained. Some theories suggest that Pinkie Sense might be a manifestation of a dormant telepathic power, while others say the Pink Pony may have a unique connection to chaotic magic, and her Pinkie Sense is a manifestation of this connection. Regardless of the truth, I believe Pinkie Pie has much more potential than she realizes. If she could fully master her Spidey Sense, she'd definitely be able to get out of 
of almost any mess she found herself in. In the end, this all remains a mystery to us because we don't have the real answer to the origin of this ability, and we'll only know when My Little Pony wants us to. Being such a successful franchise, My Little Pony didn't stop at just cartoons and toys. We even got comic books that tell alternative adventures of the show's characters, but with a bit more seriousness. That's because My Little Pony comics dive into more mature and complex content compared to the animated series. Because of this, many fans of the franchise even prefer the comics over the show, as a lot of people like more serious stories rather than kid-focused content. In one of the comic arcs, we even see the return of the villain Queen Chrysalis, who's more wicked than ever. At another point, Pinkie Pie goes through some intense challenges until she becomes the Princess of Chaos, which fits perfectly with the theory I mentioned earlier about Pinkie Pie having a connection to chaotic power. Basically, the comics are used to explain explore bolder possibilities that wouldn't likely happen in the animated series. Kids who are only familiar with the show would be shocked if they found out what happens in these comic stories. So, are you enjoying the video? If so, hit that subscribe button to keep getting more fun content about cartoons and movies. Did we just become best friends? Yep. As I've mentioned in this video, the characters from My Little Pony's G4 went through many changes before becoming what we know today. But it wasn't just the characters that went through this process. The entire series did at some point. There were so many ideas scrapped that the original story ended up being being called The Lost Generation. The concepts and concept arts can also be found in the My Little Pony Bible. Just like the franchise's comics, the story of The Lost Generation was supposed to be much more mature and complex than the final product that aired on TV. One of the discarded concepts was the idea of special pony groups. For example, there would be unicorns who were super into astrology and could control the stars in the cosmos. These ponies would have incredible magical powers and complex backstories, which would likely make the series more focused on epic adventures with a lot of amazing mysteries. Since my Little Pony has such a huge fan base, it was only natural that many Pony fans would start creating their own unofficial content related to the world of Equestria and the show's characters. Fans have created all kinds of interesting things, fan art, theories, and especially fanfics, which are fan-written stories about the show. It's like alternate universes, which in the form of plots that could have been actual episodes that were never aired or stories that serve as alternative universes where the characters are quite different. In the second category, we can find plenty of fun and creative stories, as well as fanfics that are way scarier than anything in the show. Creepy pastas. Creepy pastas are horror fanfics that put My Little Pony characters in much darker context than anything we'd ever see in the show, or even in the comics. Many of them are written as if they were banned episodes where disturbing things happen, like the ponies being hunted by some bizarre entity. A famous example of an Equestria-based creepypasta is Rainbow Factory, which tells the story of a creepy factory where disobedient ponies are turned into rainbows. Then there's Cupcakes, where Pinkie Pie goes insane and starts turning her friends into cupcakes. Another pretty scary creepypasta is called an Apple Sleep Experiment, where Applejack can't sleep after taking a malfunctioning potion, which drives her to madness. These stories show a much darker side of the characters. Honestly, I have to admit, I might have slept with the lights on after spending a night reading some of these stories. <laughs> That's it, folks. All you need to do is click on one of the two videos we've left for you on the screen and have some fun. Thanks, and see you next time.